All right, my name is Troy Federley, and my uh, study went further into looking at the use of ABS plastics. Uh, yep. The title of my uh, research paper was uh, Thermomechanical Properties of a Highly Filled Polymetric uh, Composites for Fused Deposition Modeling. Um, it looked into um, an investigation on ABS composites for applications in fused deposition modeling and rapid prototyping processes. And the key question from the study was, how do metal ABS composites perform compared to regular ABS? So the materials used were iron, copper, and ABS powders um, mixed together um, with different um, volume percentages of both iron and copper. Um, they looked at percentages of 5%, 10%, 20%, 30%, and 40% um, per volume um, for both iron and copper. Um, the conditions examined were, um, they looked at thermal conductivity, heat capacity, uh, dynamic mechanical properties, and stress strain behavior. The two studies I'll look at in more detail were the thermal conductivity and um, dynamic mechanical properties. Um, where they used um, a line source heating probe as shown for studying thermal conductivity and a cantilever uh, DMA instrument for the mechanical properties. And just in the diagram shown there, um, what they would do is they would heat up uh, the thermal cup. They would have a molten um, sample of the, of the composite where they would insert the probe, heat the probe up at a constant rate, and... Um, and then measure how long it took the, the molten sample to uh, reach uh, or to reach the same temperature. Um, and then they did that for each of the different composites. And then for the cantilever DMA instrument, uh, they did something similar where they heated up the material at a constant rate. And then, um, and then they applied a constant oscillation to it and measured uh, deformation from that. So yeah, the first study, I said looking at thermal conductivity with increased metal content, and so they tested both for copper and iron, copper on the left, iron on the right, and what they found was that at lower percentages of um, 5, 10, and 20 percent, uh, there wasn't really much of an increase in the thermal conductivity. But then it's when you get to 30% um, at the top is when you have the maximum um, increase in thermal conductivity and you actually start seeing um, differences with increased temperatures um, for both iron and copper. And then for the second study, looking at the dynamic storage modulus or stiffness and um, I just showed copper here because the results for the um, for the iron study were pretty much the same. Um, and again, um, they show that at 30%, um, you get the maximum um, you get the maximum stiffness. But then what I found interesting was that when you get over 30%, um, it actually dropped way back down to um, to the stiffness that just regular um, ABS would have, like an A4. That's the um, that's the 30 percent, um, and then A5 is the um, is when it gets increased to 40 percent. So I just found that kind of interesting. Um, so the key conclusions from the paper itself was that copper and iron-filled particles in ABS have been successfully developed for application in FDM rapid prototyping processes, um, and that injection tools and inserts will have a higher stiffness. Um, and can withstand higher pressures when made with these materials. Um, my thoughts on the research, I really liked how they tested um, different volume amounts and um, just to get different comparisons of how well each of them um, performed. And then from doing that, they were able to see which volume percentage performed um, the best under the different tests. Whereas I would imagine maybe if you just did a test with like one volume percentage you can see how it performed but you can't you couldn't determine which was the best so